Hello friends, in this lecture we will learn about Vedic age. The Vedic age is divided into two phases, early Vedic age and later Vedic age. The early Vedic age lasts from 1500 BC to 1000 BC and the later Vedic age time period is from 1000 BC to 500 BC. In the early Vedic age, Rig Veda got compiled. So, early Vedic age is also known as Rig Vedic age. The, Ved the Vedic age was started by Aryans. So, let's have a look on origin of Aryans. There are many theories by different scholars, but I listed the relevant relevant ones only. Uh, the first one is William Jones. He said Aryan came from Europe and and the reason he gave is that uh, Sanskrit, Greek, Latin and gram grammar all, all were similar language. They, there are similarities in all four languages. So, he, so as per William Jones, Aryan came to India from Europe. The second one is Max Muller theory and as per Max Muller, the Aryan came, Aryan came to India from Central Asia and he, he told this because he, he observed two different religious texts. One is Rig Ved in Indian, in Indian continent and second one is Jind Avastha, uh, a religious text, text from Iranian location. So he, so he found similarity between two different uh, religious texts of two different regions. So he thought uh, Aryan came came from a region which is, which is in between the Iran and India. The third theory is by Dr. Sampurnanand. Uh, Dr. Sampurnanand told that that. Uh, Aryans were native to India. As uh, he said, uh, Sapta Sindhu was original home of Aryan. The fourth one is Bal Gangadhar Tilak theory. He wrote a book named The Arctic Home in the Vedas. So, Bal Gangadhar Tilak, uh, as per Bal Gangadhar Tilak, Aryan came from Arctic region. And in, in his support, he provides some astronomical calculation and also some geographical calculation. The fifth one is theory by Dayanand Sarsati in his book Satyarth Prakas. And Dayanand, as per Dayanand Sarsati, Aryan came from Tibbat. And he said this because he, he found that. Uh, Many plant species that that are mentioned in Rig Ved are same as uh, plant that that were found in Tibbat. And Naji took the Dayanand Saraswati theory seriously, and they send ex expedition to Tibbat. So here is the map of Asia, and in this map you can see the central central asia region in central asia region you will find kazakhstan uzbekistan kyrgyzstan tajikistan and turkmenistan so from this region from this region aryan came to india this was supported by max muller and also we we have we are uh, aryans were genet genetically connected with central asian people so so the Max Muller theory is most correct one. In this map, you can see at that time around 2300 BC to 1000 BC, and thus in the Central Asian region there was Andro Nova culture, and below Andro Nova Andro Nova culture there was BMAC culture. So. So uh, we know Aryan came from Central Asia, and in Central Asia there was Andro Nova culture. So 
Aryan came from Andronova and BMAC cultures. And uh, I already told in Harappa civilization that uh, even in even during the Harappan civilization, many Aryans came to India or in India or in the region of Indus Valley. But at that time, the transportation system was blocked, uh, driven by ox or buffalo. So uh, you can see the distance from Andronova culture to Indus Indus River. It is very very long distance, uh, and and at present we can travel this dis this distance in uh, 12 hour or uh, 12 hours or uh, 24 hour by aer aeroplane but at that time it was block cart driven by ox so uh, it took more than years to uh, to travel from andronova to indus valley river so at the time of harappa civilization very few Aryan came to came to Harappan cities, but uh, next to Andronova culture, you will find uh, place where a uh, lot of uh, lot of modern houses uh, were found, and around five thousand to four thousand BC, horse domestication started in this region. So, with the help of horse, uh, with the help of horse, Aryan came to India. Aryan used these horses as they were, as their for their transportation. But uh, but only horse can't help to travel long distance because um, you need uh, riding skills and children and women uh, cannot travel with horse uh, for long distance. So. Um, they they did not uh, came to India until the chari chariot get developed, uh, horse drawn horse drawn chariot get developed. So, in this slide, here is the evolution of chariot and ho ho horse and evolution of chariot is mentioned. Around five thousand to four thousand BC, domestication of horse started in the region between Black Sea and south of Ural Mountain. I, I shown in the last map um, the region where horse get domesticated and in 4000 BC uh, we found horse domestication from Antalyo region and we also find wheel chariot from Antalyo but um, whether it was, it was driven by horse or some other animal it was um, not clear but probably it was driven by horse. We got wheel chariot from Antalyo, that is Turkey. Uh, and in 2300 BC, we got spoke wheel in Hisar. Um, using is spoke wheel instead of solid wheel makes the uh, makes the chariot more faster, and uh, uh, the chariot can travel long distance in in short span of time with the help of spoked wheel. So around 1900 BC, uh, use of spoked wheel chariot was very prevalent in Hithi's kingdom. So the, from here you can see after 1900 BC, the development of spoked wheel chariot, uh, many Aryan people used this uh, chariot to come uh, from Central Asia to Central Asia to Indus Valley region. Now, what what was the linguistic connection between uh, between different uh, different geographical pe people residing at different geographical locations? So, in Agada dynasty in Agada inscription of Iraq, we found the earliest evidence of Indo European language. And in Hiti's inscription around 1900 BC, the, this is inscription is in Antalyo, Turkey. 
Yeah, we, in this description, it was mentioned that Eastern branch of Indo-European skipper is speakers came came in Hit Empire, and we also found Bogaz Koi inscription. Uh, this inscription is from 1400 BC, and it is also in Anatolia, Turkey. Uh, in this inscription, in this inscription. Uh, a treaty was mentioned between Hittite kingdom and Mitanni kingdom, and that uh, and uh, the witness of the treaty were four Vedic gods: Indra, Varun, Mitra, and Nasatyas. They were the witness of this treaty, and. The literatures of uh, literatures of Aryan period are early Aryan period are Rigved. Rigved it was written around one thousand five hundred BC and in Sanskrit language. The Jind Evastha it was written around one thousand four hundred BC in Indo-Iranian language and poems by Iliad and Odysseus poem by Homer. It was written around 9, 900 to 800 BC in Indo Greek. All, all the literatures were uh, Bronze Age literatures. Only in Odysseus, Odysseus we, found, uh, we found mention of iron. In, all, uh, in Rig Veda and Jain we only found we only found uh, description of copper or bronze. So, uh, in last slide, we we in the last slide we learn about uh, Mitanni Empire and Hiti Empire and Bogaz Koi inscription. Bogaz Koi inscription. So. Uh, you can see in this map uh, the uh, the Babylon area was Iraq Iraq area Mitanni was uh, Syria Syria plus Iraq area and Hiti Empire was uh, Empire in Iraq and Turkey region so in in this region the two king uh, signed a treaty and the treaty uh, get inscripted on on rock and this is known as uh, book this uh, treaty is known uh, is written on rock and uh, and, uh, it, and the treaty is known as Bokskoi inscription So we have seen, seen uh, two religious texts. One is Rig Ved and second one is Jind Evastha. And both these texts are contemporary, uh, written around the same time period. Uh, and in all these texts, uh, in this text, we found a lot of similarities. Uh, cultural similarities and many more so we will see all this in this lecture and the Rig Ved is written in, in in Sanskrit and it is Hindu it is related to Hindu religion the Jind Evastan is um, written in Indo-Iranian language and it is related to Zoroastrian or Parsi religion but uh, still we found lot of similarities in Rig Ved and Jain Tavastha. Now you can see in Rig Ved we found words Asva, Soma, Dasa, Asura and Sapta. In Jain Tavastha we found similar word. For Asva we found Asp and for Soma we found Homa, for Dasa we found Daha, for Asura we found Ahura 
and from Sapta we found Apta. So you can see in most of the uh, word the S, S alphabet in Rig Vedic is changed to H alphabet in Jind Avastan. The Soma get changed in Homa, Dasa get changed in, into Daha and apart from similar word we also found similar uh, we also found men mention of animal sacrifice and fire worship, worship and soma cult in both the religious texts in Rigved as well as in Jain Avastan. And um, people of uh, pe people who follow the Rigved and Jain Avastan, uh, they 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 practice cremations, dead body cremations. And uh, in both in both the religious texts, uh, there was uh, in in both the religious texts, a horse and a war chariot was uh, were very important uh, part of uh, these religious texts. And uh, we found similar god in uh, both Rigved and Jain Avastha. In Rigved, uh, god Mitra is mentioned. Uh, and in Jain Davesta, uh, the Mitra is uh, we, we found same God, God Mitra. And the, the difference between Rig Ved and in Jain Davesta is that in Rig Ved, we consider Indra as Dev. But in, in Jain Davesta, Indra, Indra get considered as Daemon. And uh, uh, like Upnayan ceremony of Rig Ved, we found similar ceremony in Jain Avastan and that is called as Naujot. So Aryan came to India and they uh, and their home was Sapta Sindhu, land of seven rivers. And we know this. Uh, we know these seven rivers as Indus, Chelam, Chenab, Ravi, Bish, Satluj, and Saraswati. So these seven rivers uh, we know with his present name. Uh, uh, what is the new name of these seven rivers? But in Vedic age, in Rig Ved, these rivers were uh, were uh, written with different name. So what was what is the present name and what was vedic name mentioned in rig Ved was shown in this uh, table the indus river is mentioned as sindhu jhelum is mentioned as vitasa chenab as askini ravi as purusni Bias as vipasa Satluj as Satudri, Sarsati. Uh, in Rigved, we found Sarsati uh, or Naditama, and this is the most revered river in the Rigvedic period. Apart from these seven rivers, some other rivers are also mentioned in Rigved, uh, and that and that are Kubu River and and. Kubu, Kuba and Ganga. The last, last three, uh, the last three row get in interchanged. Uh, the Ved, Ved, Vedic name was written in, uh, in, in, in left, left column and. The present name is uh, written in right column, column. So it was written in opposite way. Uh, I hope you will understand. Uh, you will understand by. Uh, you, you will uh, change the name if you will write down notes. If you will write notes. So Kabul River is mentioned in Rigved as Kuba, Kurram River as Kubhu and Ganga is same as Ganga. 
uh, but we only found few mention of Ganga in Rig Ved. Uh, we we learn about who were Aryan, from where they came, where they get settled, and their connection with other uh, other other uh, their connection with uh, other region people or uh, other linguistic text uh, so now we will look uh, how was the early vedic society or Rig vedic society the society was uh, patriarchal in nature and it was tribal so society with a tribal chief the chief was known as rajan or king and the aryan were nature worshippers uh, they used to live uh, they used to live life of Petrol, pastoral lifestyle and go that, that is cow in English was uh, their main wealth they don't have money or uh, property but their wealth was uh, their wealth was cow go and in that time we found joint family Kula and the slave were also used to live with um, live with joint family so they were also part of joint family in rig vedic period we found uh, some educated women their names are apala ghosa lopa and mudra and the condition of women uh, were good in rig vedic period they were allowed for upnans uh, upnans uh, ceremony so then they are so they were allowed to study and and at that time no child marriage was there the rig ved mentioned mar marriages as 16 to 17 yeah. also we don't found any dory pra uh, practices in rig vedic time uh, we do uh, remarriage was prevalent and practice of niyogi or levirat was there in Niyogi, uh, when a woman get beat, when when the husband of a woman get died, then the younger brother of his husband mar married to that woman. This, this practice is called Niyogi. And the uh, Rig Vedic people were loyal to Jan or tribe. The Jan word is uh, mentioned 275 times since Rig Ved, but there is no mention of Janpad or Mahajanpad in Rig Ved, and it indicates there is lack of in territorial integrity or uh, some territorial rule. The, the gr grouping, uh, how to divide, uh, how to divide the uh, tribal uh, how to divide Jan into a smaller part it was uh, written here the group of family is known as Gram don't get confused with uh, uh, with current Gram um, like uh, with current Gram term uh, Gram notions like village it was only a group of family at that at Rig Vedic time Gram was only a group of family and when uh, when we club uh, many group of uh, gram then we get vis or clan and with many group of vis we form jan or community that is tribal community the, when when the aryan came to uh, indus indus valley river uh, there was uh, there were already some indigenous inhabitants used to live there so when the indo aryan came uh, they they defeated the local indigenous inhabitants and uh, and they start to call them as das or dasyu uh, and this resulted in social division in Rig Vedic society. The one is Aryan, 
in rn you will find uh, barrier priest and common people and the other one is das or dasyu which later came to known as sudra uh, as cow was the main wealth at, at the rig vedic time the fight for cow were frequent in rig vedic time the fight for the fight of two different group of families or two grams is mentioned as sangram in rig vedic and it was intra tribal fight not uh, inter tribal fight in rig ved the term for war is gavesti and the meaning of gavesti in english is searcher for cow so the, this uh, gavesti used to lead uh, fight for cows if if there is any cow theft or anything happened to cow then it was the duty of gavesti to start war for cow and in rig vedic time gifts were made uh, to priest uh, this gift uh, consist of cow and woman slave and the slave were used for domestic work they, ne they never used for production work uh, some some common term of rig vedi of rigved is vrajpati uh, uh, vrajpati is person who is controlling a long pasture land a big pasture land gramini it was head of gram or head of group of family and kul kulapas uh, the head of family or kul is known as kulapas the administration of early vedic age or rig vedic age the king was supported by officer uh, or ratna ratnils uh, the four important ratnils are purohit or priest senani purab and ispas or spies spy there was no standing army and no taxation system in rig vedic time a volunteer tax system no bali was the volunteer tax in the rig vedic time uh, for administration there are four assemblies mentioned mentioned in rig ved that is vidhata it it was the oldest assembly of rigvedic time in this assembly whole whole jan were allowed uh, whole jan were allowed in this assembly they were all all the all the jan were member of this assembly vidhata assembly and the work of this assembly is to distribute uh, to properly distribution of distribution or division of agriculture crop and other items among jan the second group is sabha it is group of elites or educated one and in this group uh, women were allowed to take part the third one is uh, samiti and in samiti only male members of jan or tribe were allowed in rig vedic time and the samiti used to perform the election of king uh, in rig vedic time the king was not hereditary it was uh, it, it was elected king and the election was done through the samiti the fourth assembly was gana and it is military assembly uh, the vrata gana grama or sardha these these were the people used to fight war rigved uh, rigved 
consist of uh, 10 mandals or 10 chapters and in it there are 1028 hymns uh, the chapter 1 mandal 1 and mandal 10 were added in the last all, all other chapter were written first the chapter 1 and 10 were written in last in Rigved we found mention of artisans uh, we found mention of carpenter, chariot maker, weavers, leather worker and pottery in Rigvedic age we, uh, we found painted greyware pottery from, from around 1200 BC the traders were known as Vanik in Rigvedic time and Panis uh, is used for uh, those traders who used to travel long distance. Uh, in Rigved, many animals were mentioned. Uh, we found mention of us or hearts. Uh, it, it was mentioned in Rigved for 215 times. Go or cow and Vrasba or bull. The term Aghanya uh, was uh, the term Aganya is used in Rig Vedic Rig Ved, uh, and its meaning is not to kill and this was used with reference to go or cow in the in the Rig Ved, we found uh, mention of metals and in Rig Ved, we I, IS 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 word is used for metal but uh, which metal it is uh, no history no one is clear which metal uh, represent is but as the as the rigvedic uh, rigvedic time period is uh, bronze time period so probably is used to represent bronze you know, and this and we are not sure about this because in later Vedic period, we found uh, we found Lohitaya stem for bronze or copper, and but uh, and uh, and Syamaya stem from for iron in in later Vedic age. So in later Vedic age, uh, we don't find only ayas, but we found Lohitayas or Syamayas and Lohitayas for uh, bronze and bronze and copper and Sam, Sam is for iron but in Rigved we found a mention of only ayas so probably it, is, it was for copper or bronze and we also found a mention of gold and it was mentioned as it was mentioned as Hyanya in Rigved and the Rigvedic people were also aware of silver. Um, in Rigved, the the most revered god uh, was Indra. We found uh, 250 hymns in in the praise of Lord Indra, and the second most important Lord uh, God was Agni. The third mo most important God was Varun. The other gods were Soma, god of plants, Marut, god of storm, Pusan, god of animals, and Aswin, god of health. Uh, we also found some mention of goddess in Rigved, uh, and we found mention of Aditi and Usa. Indra, Indra was war lord and he was most revered god by Rigvedic people. He was also known as Purandar or destroyer of the dwelling unit. Uh, Rigvedic Rig people used to uh, pray uh, Indra before fight or war and, and the Rigvedic gods were the, there is three division of Rigvedic god. Uh, 
द फर्स्ट वन इज पृथ्वी और अर्थ अर्थली गॉड इन दिस कैटेगरी वी फॉर्म अग्नि पृथ्वी सोम एंड बृहस्पति द सेकेंड कैटेगरी इज आकाश और स्काई इन दिस कैटेगरी वी फॉर्म गॉड सन वरुण उषा सावित्र एंड विष्णु द थर्ड कैटेगरी इज अंतरिक्ष और स्पेस इन दिस कैटेगरी वी फॉर्म मैंशन ऑफ इंद्र मारुत रुद्र एंड वायु गायत्री मंत्र many of you have heard about gayatri mantra uh, and gayatri mantra was composed by uh, priest vishwamitra and it is mentioned in third mandal of rigved and with with this gayatri mantra vishwamitra tried to expand the aryan race Uh, he told that anyone who recite the gayatri mantra will become aryan so uh, with the help of gayatri mantra in non aryan people can can become a aryan even a das das or dasyu can become aryan so uh, so he told how a sudra can change into a aryan and and he did it to expand the aryan race uh, to uh, to mix the other tribes into Ar- aryan race the gayatri mantra is in praise of god savitra and savitra was one among the 12 aditya in in rigvedic time there are twelve different deities that are collectively known as aditya and uh, they used to represent sun um, and all all these all these twelve deities are of his prince of goddess aditi after the vedic age we currently we uh, pray on we pray vivasna as a surya or god of sun but at uh, rig vedic time there are 12 different person used to represent uh, used to represent as god of sun big with uh, battle of ten king or das rajan yuddh mm. the battle of ten king is described in seventh mandal of rigved and it was fought around 1100 bc to 1000 bc uh, in this 10 tribes five aryan and five non aryan tribe get united under the guidance of uh, priest vishwamitra to fight against bharat tribe and the bharat tribe was leaded by king sudas and king suda was guided by priest vasist so the fight uh, the battle of ten king happens on the bank of river parus parusni or ravi river and king suda get, get victorious in this war and after the end of war king suda organized a great asmed yagya we we learn about uh, vishwamitra ten and uh, das rajan yudh and in das rajan yudh we have seen vasist was also a priest so well, how was vasist uh, we we have seen vishwamitra was a liberal person he tried to uh, he, uh, he gives uh, gayatri mantra and with the help of gayatri mantra he tried to change the non aryan people into aryan people but uh, but um, the priest vasist was not liberal like vishwamitra he was conservative uh, uh, he has conservative nature and as per uh, priest vasist uh, when a sudra get married to a Bra- brahman woman then the offspring will be chandal and when a brahman man get married to a sudra woman then offspring will be parasva and when 
Sudra will get, get married with Chhatri woman, then off his spring will be Vena. So the, he he tried to demoralize the intercaste marriage, and uh, probably he was uh, probably priest Vasist was the reason for introduction of ten chapter or in Rig Ved that talks about. Uh, Varna system. The tenth handle of Rigved. In, in this in this chapter that in chapter tenth we found mention of Varna system. In in tenth mandal, uh, the creation of world was written down. That how Brahma uh, created the world, and uh, from Brahma. How the four different uh, varna originated uh, from head of Brahma priest uh, priest came from arms of Brahma chhatri came from thighs of Brahma vasya came and from feet of Brahma sudra came sudra came so the it it was added later and uh, was this said. Priest Vasist has a lot of contribution and to add the tenth mandal in Rig Ved and for uh, he uh, Vasist was the reason behind caste system in India and I I will end my lecture here thank you.